Hey everyone, welcome to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy. So, um, as you may have noticed by now, uh, my schedule is a little bit off now, and it's gonna be more off for this video and the rest of the videos because um, I've been ill um, and I've been busy and lots of excuses, but um, the videos will come, just not according to the in game schedule. So don't worry about it, it just may take a little bit longer. So, um, now that I've said that, let's just jump right into, I believe, the last investigation of this case. February 24th, 3, 3.12 p.m. Wright & Co. Law Offices. I'm so sorry, Mr. Wright. I'm sorry for what my sister said. Drastic crimes require drastic measures. That's just the way it is. We did what we had to, in order for him to get the verdict he deserved. I didn't know. I never knew that the SL9 incident was just another name for Joe Dark killings. Sounds like everyone's heard about these killings but me. Nana wanted Dark convicted so badly. That's why she used me. That's why she used what happened to me. Do you mean what happened to you? It's all there in the file. Joe Dark's last victim was prosecutor Neil Marshall. Okay, so Jake's brother was a prosecutor. When he murdered uh, Officer Marshall's brother, he left behind an incriminating piece of evidence. Well, you can sure tell that it's his brother. <laughs> what did you have to do with those killings, Emma? On the night prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered, Joe Dark tried to kill me. What? He tried to kill you? Ooh, that's intense. Officer Marshall's brother, Neil, was only trying to save me. Ooh, so that means you... Yes, I was a witness in the Joe Dark trial. Probably the only witness, because that guy seems to be good. I didn't see that one. Oh, no, no, let's not move. Let's not be insensitive about this. It happened two years ago. It was right about this time of the year, too. There was a terrible thunder coming that day, unusual for the season. I was alone in my sister's office. We were planning to eat dinner together once she finished her work. Then suddenly, a terrifying man came bursting into the office. Joe Dark. It seemed like he was running from someone. He pulled, a knife, he pulled out a knife and screamed at me. I didn't know what was going on. Since then, Prosecutor Marshall showed up. Jake Marshall's brother. Joe Dark tried to take me hostage. But before he could, Mr. Marshall tackled him. Then... What happened? I'll never forget it. Lightning struck, and the lights went out. Suddenly, a bolt of lightning flashed outside the window, lighting up the office for an instant. What I saw then burned a permanent picture in my mind. I, I can still see it now. A permanent picture. Ooh, that's really rough. I don't remember the moment when Dark stabbed Mr. Marshall. So you weren't able to testify about that? No, I was only asked about when I was attacked. That must be why Lana, why she made up the crime. Wait, so... What crime was made up? Because... You were definitely attacked, and Neil Marshall was definitely killed. There's nothing made up about that, right? Made it up? You mean provided bogus evidence? The prosecutor's office wanted that guilty verdict so badly. Lana forged the evidence. Mr. Ashworth lose Houston. Ashworth? Why are you surprised, Phoenix? Yes, but I'm sure he didn't know anything about it. Okay, fair point. He couldn't have known he was being given false evidence. Even so. That's when it all started. The rumors about Mr. Edgeworth were me. It's all my fault. If I could have just testified properly, none of this would have happened. So it's true, even though he may not have known it, Edgeworth really was in for the false spying act. Man, he was just like the... Like, puppet for that. He didn't... He, he, he didn't do it. He just... He thought it was real evidence, and that's why he used it. How else can you, like, perform your job? He was just a pawn in the game, man. After that case ended, Lana was never the same. She 
she became cold, like she is today, she must not have been able to face up to what she did, especially not to Emma. What did you see in the instant that crime occurred? Oh, that's really intense. Also, that does not look like the picture of the Marshall that was just shown us. <sighs> I mean, I can't say anything about Go Dark because you're seeing it from the side, but that does not look like the Marshall. Marshall. Just saying. Just because he has the same hair does not make him the same person, and you, you gotta have it in the face as well. Dark, knock down Mr. Marshall and raise his knife. The Marshall stabbed right in front of this poor girl? I don't remember what happened after that. Apparently I passed out. Oh, that's a powerful image right there. That, that facial expression of uh, Lana. When I came to, Lana was cradling me in her arms. Poor well, Emma. You've been through so much. I... I couldn't bring myself to testify about that instant. I tried, but the words just wouldn't come out. I was traumatized. <laughs> I drew a picture, but it wasn't any good. Two years ago. You must have been 14. That's understandable. I did not change a single hair in two years, even though I'm a teenager and a young adult. Once it was all over, I made up my mind. I decided that when I grew up, I'd become a scientific investigator. I want to be able to fight crime with my testimonies and find the evidence to make an airtight case. That way, Lana would never have to forge any. Noble? Very noble. I see. I think we're finally starting to understand what makes Emma tick. But there's still something that bothers me about that crime. We have a lot to talk about. There's something that's puzzling me, Emma. What is it? You said you were in Lana's office at that time, right? That's right. Why then would a serial killer come running in there? Not only that, but he was being chased by a prosecutor. Oh, there's no mystery there. Joe Dark had been taken in for questioning that day. Taken in for questioning? You mean by the police? Of course. This happened at the police department. He tried to run away halfway through the interview and fled into my sister's office. So your sister has an office at the police department even though she's chief prosecutor? But why did he run all the way over to your sister's office? Because the detective's office... Because the detective offices and the questioning room are right across from the elevator. Across from the elevator? But Lana was the chief prosecutor, wasn't she? No, silly! Didn't I tell you? Two years ago, Lana was a detective. She worked herself up way quickly. She was the best in the entire force. What? That's news to me. After the Joe Dark case, she was transferred to the prosecutor's office and made chief prosecutor. The, there has to be something about that, that, like, even though they successfully closed the case, they made her a prosecutor instead of a detective? Like, because they also moved Jake Marshall and, like, away from their, from, from their, like, original jobs, they made her move as well. There has to be something about that. Lana used to be a detective? I better have another talk with her. Yup, let's go, right away, first. See this? It's my attorney time. Ah, oh, well, I've never seen a real one before. The first one has actually been interesting. Its composition is mostly silver. The gold plating is flaking here. She analyzed it. Scientifically, it doesn't appear to be any corrosion due to soul size. I'll give you 50 bucks for it. I'm sorry, but it's not for sale yet. February 24, Detention Center, Visitor's Room. I am cold. I am literally Elsa. Uh, Lana. L Lana! Mr. Wright, it seems I keep causing you trouble. Falsifying evidence. I didn't think you would have typed. Criminals don't mind playing foul. Why should we? But Lana, if you're wrong, an innocent person might be found guilty. Believe me. I understand the risks. Lana. Emma told me about you. Oh? About how you were a detective two years ago. 
and how the SL9 incident was the reason for your transfer to the prosecutor's office. Also, how you're literally Mia. That's right. Could you fill me in on the details, especially about that unusual change of jobs? I suppose you have a right to know, Mr. Wright. A lot of revelations were uncovered at the trial today, not the least of which was the fact that this case is largely connected to another one two years ago. Evidence from that case was stolen as well, though I expected as much. I know how obsessive Officer Marshall can be. A trial? It really wasn't fair, was it? I believed in you, Lana. I believe that no matter what happened, you'd always stick to the truth. It couldn't be helped, though. At that trial two years ago, I sold my soul. Wow, drama queen much? <laughs> well, all drama aside, exactly. The matter of fact is, at 5.15, there was no murder at the police department. Tell me it's not true, Lana. What the witness, what Miss Tara said. Why you stabbing Mr. Goodman with a knife? Lana! I don't understand! Why won't you tell us? Emma? This doesn't involve just... Uh, me. Or us. I don't think I've ever seen Lana look so face before. It's true. I was a member of the police force two years ago. She was amazing! We still talk about all the cases she and Chief Gant cracked together. I mean, I mean, Gant is chief of police, so she would be under his command, yeah. Chief Gant? He was the deputy chief of police back then. He was the deputy chief of police back then, but he still worked crime scenes. Devoted? Much? Yeah. Damon Gant, he was everything I aspired to be. They were the best team ever. He solved crimes before the reports could even be filed. Emma really idolizes her big sister. But now you're chief prosecutor. What happened? I always planned on becoming a prosecutor. The reason I became a detective was to gain experience investigating crime scenes so you could use that experience in court, right? Gant's help in the SL9 case was crucial to his resolution. After that, he became chief of police and arranged my transfer to the prosecutor's office. Okay, so he was de deputy before and then he became full on chief. And she was a detective first, and then became chief of prosecutors. Maybe I should ask more about this investigation of theirs two years ago. Two years ago, I was second in command of the detectives investigating Dark. Second in command? That means the investigation led was Damon Gann, right? That means the investigation lead was Damon Gann, right? Yes, Deputy Chief Gann and I shared the same office and the same investigation. Huh. So she must have been like his pupil, because otherwise why would a deputy chief share uh, an office with like a mere detective, you know, so to speak. We even had the same office. We led a team of the best detectives on the force. So she le she was also a leader of the detective, though she was just a mere detective herself. She must have been really good and Damon Gant must have seen something in her because that seems a little weird, authoritatively speaking. Detective Goodman, whose case it was, gave Marshall an angel star. It was the first time Marshall worked with his brother. It was quite gung-ho. I mean, I can imagine. Without a doubt, Joe Dark was a serial killer. We asked him to come in for questioning. We were desperate for evidence. That was when his final murder took place. When he tried to murder Emma. Prosecutor Marshall was trying to save me from Dark. Can you imagine if Emma had actually been killed and we wouldn't have seen this little, little bean? Ugh, my heart! You see, the first person who happened upon the scene of the crime was me. Yeah. Now you tell us. Because she was cradled in Lana's arms, so... It would make sense that Lana is also the first one that happened to bomb scene. Damon Gant and Neil Marshall were the ones questioning Dark at that day. Yeah, so prosecutor and deputy chief of police. Which makes sense for such a big case. Usually the prosecutor isn't really there though, right? Or am I... I don't know. I thought that only detectives said that and the prosecutor just got the information. But 
Maybe I'm wrong. The investigation was in its final stages and Dark must have suddenly panicked. So he waited until Gant and Marshall let their guards down in that flooded room. I don't think he panicked, he just wanted to escape, bruh. From there, he ran straight to the office shared by Deputy Chief Gant and myself. Well, if he wanted to escape, he wouldn't have done that necessarily. That's where he found me. So, you were the first person to run to the scene, Rana? Huh? It appears so. I was filing some papers while Gan and Marshall were crashing in dark. Oh. Boy, that's rough. That's that's the knife. That's the knife we found in the locker. Uh, I mean, in the muffler. Uh, yeah, that's definitely the, that knife. And Neil Marshall was stabbed with it. And because you can see that the guy underneath is Joe Dark. So Joe Dark just passed out, I guess? Joe Dark didn't actually die here, did he? Also, we're seeing a lot of um, background things, items, that we didn't see before. Which is interesting. I mean, with before, I mean the original games and the DS games. The, there was no background, or it was very vague at least. But now we actually get to see the environment, which is nice. And yeah, it, it clarifies a bit where the bodies are, because that was kind of vague before. They told us, but now we can actually see where it is. Because we'll, we'll see that when we get to Gan's office, that where this is exactly. Anyway, when I returned to my office, I saw three bodies on the floor I smelled blood. She must have thought they were all dead. <laughs> oh boy. Three bodies? Prosecutor Marshall, Prosecutor Marshall, the victim, Emma, who had passed out, and the suspect, Joe Dark. During the struggle, it seems Mr. Marshall struck a final blow before he died. Joe Dark had incurred a minor concussion and lay unconscious. What did you do? To be honest, I panicked. I picked up Emma, carried her out of the room, and just held her. Can't blame her, after all her sister must have gone through. After that, I placed Dark under immediate arrest. Let me guess. Let me get this straight. You were all involved in the SL9 incident. That's right. Quite a coincidence. Hmm. I don't buy it. What are you saying? There's no way everyone involved in this trial is also involved in that incident just by chance. But that case was solved two years ago. At least one person went to extremes because he didn't believe he was truly sold. Hint, hint, Jake Marshall. Officer Marshall. Yes, his actions came as a surprise to me as well. Ever since his brother died, he's changed completely. I guess he wasn't convinced with the ruling against Joe Dark. Hmm. And if you have that doubt, I mean, it's your brother. You want to know what happened, you know? Life doesn't end with the closing. Everyone has to live the rest of their lives with their memories. The case just might not be over yet. A Emma was assaulted by Dark at the police apartment, right? Yes, in the office that Damon, the Damon Gant and I shared. The office that Mr. Gant now occupies by himself, the chief's office. Maybe we should have a look at the chief's office. The, the site of the final SM9 murder. Also, guys, I wonder, just this way out of left field, is Emma or Ima? Ima and Nana. Or Emma and Nana. Because if you pronounce it really English like, it would be Emma. But there's only one M, which makes me think of Emu. You know, the animal Emu. So Ima. And it also sounds a little bit more Dutch, so maybe that's why I'm thinking of it. But um, let me know, Emma or Ima? February 24th, prosecutor's office, underground parking lot. No one's here today, not even Miss Starr. Everyone's probably busy looking into what exactly went down in the evidence room. That must be where the detectives are. We proved the court today that on the day of the crime, no one was murdered in the evidence room at 5.15. Yeah, I thought they were finally making some headway in our case. In the set it looks like we just ended up making Lana look even more guilty. Hang in there, Lana. I've got to find all the answers by tomorrow. Uh, let's go to Edgeworth. Man, his office is to die for, really. February 24th, High Prosecutor's Office, room 1202. Mr. Edgeworth is in the air. 
Your beast being questioned by an inquiry committee? You took a real beating in court today. Yeah, but Lana admitting to falsifying evidence two years ago? I mean, he must be under fire because of that. I guess we'll just have to come back later. Cover the 24th Police Department entrance. Ah, here we go. Howdy, Bambina. I can whip up my voice again. <laughs> and it's extra creaky today. Oh, Mr. Marshall. I never thought things would turn out this way when I woke up this morning. Kissera, sera. You never know where a lie will lead you, eh, Bambina? I should know my luck had run out when old Billy dried up this morning. Who's Billy? Must be his fat guy. <laughs> Fair, yes. Say, where are you headed? It's over to the prosecutor's office for a little interrogation. It's a voluntary appearance, but we all know I won't be coming back. Uh, you think he's gonna be fired? Oof. Sorry, but you can't go in the evidence room today, partner. But Mr. Marshall, why did you do it? I mean, fair. He completely broke several laws in there, so... I, I figure he would be fired, yes. Why the prospect was head with? If ever there was a case I needed to know the truth about, it was that one. Before you turn yourself in, Mr. Marshall, would you mind telling us exactly what happened? Looks like I remember getting a steak lunch Lee. Something was fishy about the trial from the very beginning. It wasn't just me either. All of the text is sold through. What do you mean, fishy? Some of the facts reported were inconsistent with the evidence we found. For example, we grew the whip. You the weapon. You mean... A switchblade knife with a broken tip? That was Joe Dark's, alright. But in the initial culture report, the question was raised. The question? The blade of the knife was not a perfect match with the wound the victim sustained. What does that mean? It means there is a good chance that knife was not the murder weapon. Huh. Interesting. However, in the report that was finally submitted, that possibility had been agreed. I think of sealed with forged evidence? Ooh, that's rough. I can see why he doesn't trust this. That key is left behind scars on all of us. The scars that S9 incident left that the S9 le uh, incident left behind. I got the loops, but he got great. He was one of the best prosecutors around. I mean he's also got the loops, just saying. <laughs> I had just made the ticket when it went down. It was our first case together. You're claiming that he was already a prosecutor before you became a detective? Because you seem a lot older than your brother. I thought that Neil was the younger brother here. Do we have... Um... Yes? Oh, there's no ages in here. That sucks. And uh, how old is Jake? Three. Nah. Nah, Neil Marshall looks like he's below 30 in this, so even if you like count two years after, he would still be like 31 or something. There's no way. Yeah. Neil must have been like a prodigy or something and made prosecutor very early, and Marshall must have been a bit of big old dumb and became detective late. That's my hat kinda. <laughs> because there's no way that Jake is younger than Neil. It was our first case together. How old was he? Your brother. <laughs> Man, I was on this entire tangent. He was 27 at the time. Which means you were 31 at the time, so you are definitely older than your brother. Yeah, I was right. Yeah, I'm right. He was awarded the highest honor at the very age. The highest honor? You mean the King of Prosecutors? Yeah, so Neil must have been a prosecutor for quite a bit of time, because you don't just get that on like your first day, you know? Meanwhile, it was Marshall's first day, or at least he was very recently, he had very recently become a detective. So that's interesting, even though Neil is younger, he was like uh, a prosecutor longer than he had been a detective. I knew it. What are you looking at me like that for? That's an honor for a prosecutor. So Marshall must have really been close with his brother. Dating as an island since the place, it wasn't the same day as... That's right, it was the day of the evidence transfer. 
Does that always happen? Because I feel like when Atrof got the award, it was also evidence transfer all day. Interesting. It was drizzling that morning, and by nightfall there was thunder. They shoot you for that in text. <laughs> I can't believe two years have gone by already. I tried to steal the evidence so the case wouldn't die. Apparently someone tried to stop you. Detective Goodman was murdered, and the evidence locker was empty. There was something going on behind the scenes in that case. We all knew that later. Every detective involved in that investigation, save one, was taken care of. Yeah, that's what I was aiming at before. Like, everyone got, like, demoted in some way. I... Lana was not demoted. She was, if anything, upgraded, I guess. But, um... They swapped positions. Like, not swapped. They, they changed positions. Basically, everyone that was involved in this changed positions. Except for Bruce Goodman, because otherwise it would have been weird if they did it for everyone that would have, like, raised some questions. Um... And Emma, because she didn't have a job yet. She was still a student at that time. Hmm. Interesting fact. Just pointing that out. Mrs. Miss Starr was fired. And I was demoted and boxed away in a tiny room. You can't keep a cowboy down, brother. What about Detective Goodman? If they did something to him too, the commissioners would get suspicious. Also, he is so, such a detective that you cannot think of anything but him being a detective because if, if you have a stereotypical detective in front of you, it's him. No, they were careful enough not to be too obvious. They? Who are you talking about? Don't get upset, Davina. I'm Dave and Gant, and Lana Sky. The investigation with Dean Gant and his second in command, Lana Sky. There wasn't a person on the force who hadn't heard of that duo. That case was the biggest step in both their careers. After the case ended, Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office. Oh, after the case ended, Lana. Sorry, I just got a case of Marshall. Uh, Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office, right? Yeah, Dean Gant, the new chief of police, arranged for that to happen. Of course he did. He wanted her in some kind of position that they could still work together. If, if she had to be changed, then being chief prosecutor, I feel like you would be in close contact with the chief of police. It's never been the same since she left. Everyone knew her said so. Chief Prosecutor Sky was totally different than when she was in the take. Now that he mentions it, Emma said something like that too. Tell me, what happened to my sister? Sorry, Bambina, but her secret is too well guarded. I never found out. Lana's secret. It all started two years ago. So, there you have it. That's my story. Did you enjoy it, partner? It was certainly... a lightning. There's one thing for sure I found out in court today. You are a good defense attorney. Dead boy Edgeworth isn't my enemy. No, he's not. You're right. He was the one who used falsified evidence to get a guilty verdict. But someone else was the one who gave that him that evidence and planned everything. Exactly. Jake Marshall knows what's up. But someone is named again. Most likely, yeah. You don't believe me? Well, I don't blame you. I won't even be a patrolman after today. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you have been drinking out of a out of a flask that had been closed this entire time. Hmm. <laughs> Too bad I won't be around to work with when you become a real scientific investigator. Oh, that's kind of sad. That's kind of really sad. It seems like Jake Marsha really wanted to work with Emma. Also, he has full faith in her, which is even cuter. Adios, Bambina. There needs to be a little stripe on the O, but I'll forgive you. Or the I. No, I feel like the O. <laughs> I've been trying to learn Spanish uh, a little bit, but uh, I, I, like, I can read it, kinda, but I have trouble with the, all the stripes and the things. <laughs> it just, I just started a little bit of Spanish. A little bit. February 24th, police station, criminal care spot. They're probably gonna send us away though, because he said that we can't go into the evidence room. 
This place is always pretty empty, but today it's deserted. No, it's not. The chief is right there. That must mean everyone's busy solving crimes. Oh, if you're looking for the others, they're all in the conference room. Uh, thanks. Wow, he actually talked to us. With the chief prosecutor saying what you did and the decision about what to do about Mr. Atchworth, not to mention our statement to the media and tomorrow's trial, there's more chaos going on than Thanksgiving and Christmas put together. I think festive is the word usually used for those. Um, sir, we'd like to have a look around Chief Gans's office. Just use the connecting hallway to the other building and take the elevator to the top floor. Really? You mean it's okay for us to go in there? I mean, we aren't police officers or anything. Oh, hey, right! You can go in there! I'm a big dumb! It's off limits! Now I can see what the gumshoe gets this unique charm. I'm also gumshoe because I'm as dead. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's head to the Jesus office. So this is the police mascot, is it? The Blue Badger, the future star of the police force. You can find a little change from the one outside. Oh, well, the dancing Blue Badger is still under development, you see. Do you have a trade for us? Absolutely. It's cutting out stuff. Very now. I showed this doll here to my daughter and she burst into tears. <laughs> Don't show her the moving mock-up outside that, you'll give her nightmares. Okay, that was freaking amazing how happy I did that. Okay, she's off it. <laughs> Holy dangerly, that's intimidating. Oh my gosh, that's intimidating. Ooh. Also, there's a picture on the left. Uh, probably from the award ceremony where Neil won the thing. There's a lot of beautiful wall painting decoration things and pretty faces on the right. Yeah, that, that pretty much sums this room up. February 24th, Police Department Chief's Office. Is someone playing right now on that organ? Because... <laughs> oh, where am I? <laughs> so I'm guessing... Yeah, definitely. Uh, the bodies were found right here, on the left. It has to be. It looks like the image we saw. Whoa, where am I? In the chief's office, silly! At least that's what it said on the floor. Check out the pipe organ. That's real, isn't it? So I'm assuming this side is Lana's side, or was Lana's side. Hey, I used to take organ lessons in kindergarten. It seems like Lana has a way smaller space, had a way smaller space, than Gan does, because Gan doesn't literally take over his office just by the order alone. <laughs> I like the windows. I like the, I like the, what's the word for that? The mosaic? On the, you know, the colors. <laughs> they used to call me Little Miss Bach. I thought I was a genius until they tried teaching me notes. Oh gosh, stop it, Emma. Oh no. I never could remember where C was. I see. Hmm? Oh, it's you two! Yeah. What's that paper he was reading in his desk? So, Raito, have you been swimming lately? No, everything is going swimmingly, I promise. No, I haven't. I've been kind of busy lately. I can appreciate that. I've had my hands full too, with Mr. Marshall's misconduct and not a provocative statement. Oh, you mean the one about the forged evidence? Two years have passed since that incident. My, how time flies! See that big, see that big picture on the wall over there? How could you possibly miss that, Mr. Gann? Interestingly, they, they made them look a little younger, all of them. Like... Yeah, like, both Gant and Sky look younger in this. Not too much, because it's only two years, but... Huh. That's a picture of Lana, Neil, and me. If you're blind, I explain to you. <laughs> this is Mr. Marshall's brother, Prosecutor Neil Marshall. We took it uh, to commemorate our work together. I can't quite seem to put my finger on it now. Again, theme picture added to the board record. 
photo at the award ceremony of Game Lana. Yep. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to reminisce all day, but there are matters that need my attention. I'm going to lock up here, so let's go out together. Oh, but this office, it was a crime scene two years ago, wasn't it? That case has long since been over. There's no need to investigate it anymore. All the same, we'd still like to have a look around. Perhaps you didn't hear me. I said there's no need to investigate it anymore. Now hurry up and get out! I have a meeting to attend. He is hiding something. <laughs> Looks like we aren't welcome. Seems that the case is over with the other. What do you mean? You feel threatened by Phoenix because Phoenix is doing a great job. Chief Gant denied our request to search a crime scene. That means there must be a reason he doesn't want us looking around in there. Or maybe he's like scared by Emma because it would trigger like some memory that would be like disadvantageous to him or something like that. So it's either Phoenix being really good at his job or Emma like remembering things he doesn't want her to remember. Something like that. You mean like a clue? Oh, also guys, if you hear stuff, um, at the time of this recording, it's carnival here in the Netherlands and I don't know how it's in other countries, but we, throughout the entire country, we have like these big, big like tractors and, and, and trucks and stuff with like very colorful, like people work all year on them to, to create like these very big like art pieces basically but it's also fun if they're if they're bad <laughs> but um the main thing is they make a lot of noise they make a lot of music and a lot of sound and a lot of drunk people on them so uh and my house is by a road that the that the cars like the the, the art pieces <laughs> i'll call them drive by and uh, it's part of the route that they're driving, so uh, I, I thought it would only start in about an hour or so, but I'm already hearing some, so if there's any noise, I apologize. It's gotta be a way to get ahead of you February 24th, police station, criminal affairs department. Hey pal, I miss you Gumshoe. Detective Gumshoe, aren't you supposed to be in a meeting? I'm, uh, just taking a breather. My feet hurt. From sitting so long? Actually... From serving everyone coffee. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe is still out of the loop. Say, have either of you seen Mr. Edgeworth? Edgeworth? No. Why do you ask? He's on the fire from both the police department and the prosecutor's office. It's almost like the battles between you two in court. That sounds serious. Is it because of what my sister said? That's basically what it all boils down to, pal. That falsified evidence two years ago. Now Mr. Edgeworth has the whole world after his blood. Yikes. But why would Edgeworth be blamed? It's not like he knew the evidence was forged. Now is Gaia's guilty party here, isn't she? Regardless, the prosecutor is responsible for the evidence they present in court. Not only that, but as you know, there have been a lot of rumors going around about Mr. Edgeworth. His amazing talent as a prosecutor has kept him safe from those who don't like him. But now, with this, are there really so many people who hate him? In our world, only those with talent rise to the top. Mr. Edgeworth not only has that, but he's young. There's no better recipe I know of for making enemies. Hey Dick, give up the good work! Yes sir! Let's go out for lunch again sometime, my treat! Yes, sir! You gotta take me back to that joint sometime, okay, Dick? Yes, sir! You don't have any problems with enemies. Yeah, well, I'm careful not to stick out. Anyway, I'm a bit worried about it. Under all this pressure, I'm afraid Mr. Edward just might crack. Actually, I took a look at the file earlier while the coffee was brewing. Well, did you find out anything? The only evidence Dark left behind was during his final attack. 
final attack on Emma. <laughs> when he killed Prosecutor Marshall was trying to protect some girl. Seems that the judge never realized Emma was the girl. That's when he left the most incriminating evidence of all! Well, what was it? Oh, um, let's see. I think it had something to do with the murder weapon. Oh, I forget. Look, it's all written somewhere in here, okay? Powers of recollection never feel to trust. Maybe we should show him the murder weapon. He might jog his memory. Okay, but first more talk. Joe Dark was 42 at the time. He was just your run-of-the-mill businessman. This is what made him take the serial killer. One day on his way home from work, he hit someone with his car. His car? So... It was an accident. An accident, yes, but it transformed him into an animal, pal. An animal? He killed a man that witnessed the accident. Then, he killed a lady who saw that second crime. A kid walked by just then, so he killed him too. Then when he was burying the bodies, a jogger came upon the scene and he was killed as well. Finally, he turned himself in. <laughs> okay, so wait. First one was an accident. Then he killed the witness. Then he killed another witness, that's three. Then he killed a kid. And then he killed a jogger. So he killed five people, all because of that one accident. That's insane. <laughs> That's... that's ludicrous. Holy dang. Talk about trying to protect yourself and only digging yourself further into that grave. Seems he was pretty careless, I don't know. Of course, this is all conjecture. There wasn't a single shred of evidence. So he turned himself in. Yes, but in the middle of his questioning, he fled and murdered his final one. Prosecutor Marshall. That crime was witnessed by someone too, but luckily Dark was arrested on the spot. Well, this murder seems very unnecessary and also uh, not his modus operandi, because he killed witnesses. But neither Emma nor Neil were a witness. Well, Neil was a witness to Emma, but why did he want to kill Emma in the first place? He, he couldn't have known who Emma was. He just bar barks into an office, for him, any random office basically, and he barged in and he saw a girl in there that he didn't even know who it was and he was like, yep, I'm gonna kill that one. Is it because just he's crazy? Th that doesn't seem right to me because his op modus operandi has been very clear and this does not fit it. So this is weird. This, this... He probably something was forged here to make him guilty of this crime, even though he may not even have done it. Because this seems weird. This this doesn't seem like Joe Dark. But I mean, the end result is that he was convicted, and he killed five people. But I don't know, would his crime, like, would his sentence be heavier if it was five or six? I think for one person you already get the death sentence in this um, universe. So, they basically just made him guilty of this crime just to have him convicted. And also because this is a prosecutor, so the sentence is heavier. Because we've already gone through this with Bruce Goodman. He was a detective and he's so, so he's part of the law, so it's the the... The, the sentence will be heavier. But I believe that, you know, already from this, just just this, uh, this um, explanation of who he killed and why, and then this last person seems weird. Just putting that out there. That crime was witnessed by someone too, but luckily Dark was arrested on the spot. Yeah, he would have killed Emma too. <laughs> because that is his modus operandi. Once he killed Neil, he was gonna kill Emma. It's a good thing that last witness wasn't killed. That last witness, aka Emma. Um, about this. Hey, is that? It has a tag attached to it, the label SL9 is the first one. Well, it says SL9 too, but okay. Uh, I believe this would be the broken murder weapon you were speaking of. What are you doing with that? Ever since that case was closed, that knife's been locked away in a locker. On the day that the victim was murdered, this suddenly disappeared from the locker. And was found in Mr. Asher's car muffler. That's it! 
No one remember what that incriminating piece of evidence was. When you showed me that knife, it all came back to me. Well, what is it, detective? Quick, before you forget again. <laughs> That's terrifyingly accurate. This knife, it was Joe Dark's, wasn't it? That's right. We traced it back to the store he bought it at. Plus, it had his fingerprints on it, too. No one actually witnessed him using, to, using it to murder anyone, right? That's where his luck ran out. When you take a good look at the knife, you'll see it's broken. You don't have to take a good look to notice that. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, take a guess where the broken off tip of the knife was found. That's what did him in. Where was it? Probably in Neil. Victim Neil Marshall is carrying it inside his own body. That, that makes it sound like he swallowed it or something. Y you mean it was in the staff room. It was found deep inside the staff Yeah, there you go. Did it match Dark's knife? You bet! Down to the last fiber! It's pretty conclusive. Neil's are all top to report and the report Stabbed in the back, died from a punctured part of a lot. Ooh. A knife tip was in the room. Okay. I hope he died instantly because that's rough. Uh, Switch tape knife updated the report back. The broken tip was found in the victim's body, belonged to murderer Joe Dark. Well, if you say victim, it could still be Bruce Goodman, so you need to clarify that it was Neil Marshall. Just saying, because we have to deal with many bodies in this case. Well, there you have it in a nutshell. That's all I know. <laughs> Can I ask you one more thing? What is it? If it's money you need, you should ask Chief Kent. I heard he'll loan anyone 50 bucks. It's not money, but it does concern the Chief. His office is a crime scene, right? It's where Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered. Chief's out now, and his office is locked. But we'd like to have a look around, if that's okay. Well, any detective's ID card can unlock the door. What? Really? But if I let a civilian in there, I'd be charged with breach of trust. Breach of trust? Simply put, I'd be canned. Oh. Sorry, pal. I don't plan on getting fired because of you. <laughs> Do you plan on getting fired because of yourself? How about this ID card? It was a tech equipment. That won't work either. The data that was deleted the day he died. Okay. Uh, so, in other words, Gumshoe is our only chance of getting into that office. I wonder if there's something we could show him that would make him change his mind. Gumshoe is not the only person that can get us in the office, okay? He's not our only chance. That's the ID card record, isn't it? We still don't know who the first number is. Yes, there's only one number left to investigate at 4.20 p.m. The victim detective Goodman must have entered the evidence room along with someone else. Someone with an executive office number. Sub, 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 sub. That's one seven too many, detective. An executive officer. Hmm, I might just have a hunch. About that jar, I think I've seen it somewhere before. Somewhere? Or maybe it's one of those memories people have from the previous lives. This must be the most uninformative detective I've ever met. Something about it makes me feel uneasy. It's like I'm in the chief's office and he's yelling at me. Again? Where could I have seen that before? Ah, oh, come on, that didn't do it? New to see the Marshal Marshall, 27 mail, date and time of death, February 19th. 7 p.m. and 7 p.m. So that's actually really close to the date we are at now. Just two years ago. Cause of death, same with stab wound, piercing hard lung. Assessment died from blood loss in under 10 minutes. Weapon found in wound was missing tip. So he didn't even die instantly. Oh, oh that's the worst. February 24th, High Prosecutor's Office, room 1202. I wonder if Atrov is back yet. There he is. It looks like he's writing something. What are you doing here? He sure was quick to throw that paper on the floor. Huh. Tough day in court, huh? Hmm. I've had to live the past two years with rumors flying around. What's another allegation to me? Cheer up, Master Atcher. I'm running for you. That's Atcher for you. Always trying to hide his real feelings. Unnecessary feelings. So, what do you want? Unlike some people, I don't have all day. Two years ago, I used false evidence to obtain a guilty verdict. 
That's what it all breaks down to, and nothing I can do erase, can erase that fact. But you didn't know, did you? I mean that the evidence was falsified. The police department and the prosecutor's office share a bond of trust. If that bond is broken, we stand to lose everything. The police department's error is my error, my responsibility as the prosecutor in charge. Oh, that sucks. The fact remains the same, no matter what excuses I might have. Mr. Ashford, I take pride in my work. So tell me why? Why has it all come to this? Mr. Ashford can't keep this, this kind of emotion bottled up. Are you up for the trial tomorrow? Hmm. First last year's trial, and now this one. It seems all you do is worry about me. To be honest, you're getting on my nerves. Mr. Edgeworth, you can't just walk out on the trial. Tomorrow is the last day. It's too late to change prosecutors. I'll bet that's what my superiors are banking on. I never thought that case would come back to haunt me like this. Isn't that the paper that Gans was reading? What do you mean? The list of evidence. It seems too short. Most lists run twice as long. It's only half as long as most lists? That is odd. After Neil Marshall was murdered, I became prosecutor for that case. I may not have been part of the investigation, but I knew what I had to do. Use the evidence I was given to prove the suspect guilty. That was really the only thing on my mind at the time. I mean, fair. That's your job. Say, we just saw a picture taken around here, right? Something seems strange about it. Could you tell us again about what happened that day? The day Detective Goodman was murdered? You were participating in the ceremony over at the station, right? I've never cared for ceremonies, but I had to attend that one. Because you were awarded this. Those receiving awards can't effectively skip out on the ceremony. I finished off at the office in the morning that drove over to the police department. You finished up at the office? Yes, just odds and ends, clerical stuff. I didn't plan on returning to the office that day. That is until I was asked to take something back. Take something back? This. Oh yeah, Chief Gant asked you to hold on to that, didn't he? Yes. It was a piece of uh, it was a piece of evidence in a case that was closed half a year ago. He asked me to bring it back to the prosecutor's office. That's the story we heard yesterday. So you came back to the prosecutor's office because the chief asked you. That's right. This picture was hanging on the wall in Chief Gant's office. Prosecutor Neil Marshall, he had just started making a name for himself. Looks like this was taken when he received the King of Prosecutors trophy. Speaking of that, there's something that bothers me. Yes? The trophy Mr. Marshall is holding, it's a little different than yours. Yes, you're right. Ah, uh, I remember now. Remember what? That was what the official Prosecutors trophy looked like until two years ago. There's a story behind its design. Story? Sounds interesting. Would you mind telling it to us? It's simple, really. Contradiction? That's what the award's based on. This award originates from an ancient Chinese tale. In Chinese, the word contradiction is written with two characters. The first means halberd and the second means shield. Huh. That is very interesting. Have you heard the story? Me? Oh, uh, sure, everyone knows that. Uh, why don't you tell it, though? For my sake. Very well. I know you don't know, right? Huh. Long ago. I like that the testimony, like, got uh, the cross-examination music is playing. Long ago, in the kingdom of Chu, there was an arms merchant. One day, he presented the king with two items. The first was a halberd he claimed could slice any shield or arm. Any weapon. Wait a minute. Objection! Those flames come to take each other. Pursue corner, here we go. Very deceptive. But then again, you've heard the story before, right? Anyway, as you mentioned, the very descriptions of these items discredit them both. When the king pointed this out, the version was left speechless. And thus, the Chinese word for contradiction was born. <laughs> That's funny. I believe that's, uh, like, the actual story here. <laughs> oh, I see. So the chipped shield and the broken knife symbolize... Precisely so. 
They symbolize the merchant's items. The ancient tale ends with the merchant at a loss for words, but it's in our nature to pursue matters to their conclusion, even if it results in something as ugly as this thing. Wow, thanks Mr. Rashford. I learned something new today. That's funny. If that's so, then why were you only given the shield? You'll have to ask Chief Gan. Two years ago, he had the halberd part of the award abolished. Chief Gan. Probably you couldn't stand seeing a knife anymore. King of Prosecutor's trophy updated in the court record. Uh, two years ago, the halberd was removed at Gan's behest, giving it its current form. Can we see what he wrote? I wonder what he was writing. Before. Come on, Mr. Wright. Let's take a look. Are you crazy? After sitting right there. Just distract him. I'll check it out. Uh, hey, Etcher. Is that the type of gum shoe out the window there? Oh no, he's falling to the ground! Hold on. First, let me see what this girl's doing crawling around my feet. He didn't even look. What? Letter of. R r r if you're having trouble reading, I'll read it for you. It says Letter of Resi Resignation. Resignation, Etcher. You don't mean. I'm tired, right? I feel as if something inside me has died. Mr. Etcher, if none of it is your fault! I know the path I've walked. You do need to tell me. And the path I have walked hasn't been in just. I can't forgive myself for what I've done. And no one else should forgive me either. Uh oh. I think he's serious. Mr. Ray, please, you have to do something! This letter of resignation. I wonder if I could use it for anything. Letter of resignation put into pocket. Atra's discarded letter of resignation. He is serious. Oh no. We should. Oh, we should. Oh, we're gonna break Gumshoe's heart, guys. Oh. February 24th, prosecutors off first this, but then we're gonna break Gumshoe's heart, so it'll take us to the office. Oh, that's rough. Excuse me. Okay. Oh. Would either of you care for a quarter pound of roast beef? So, if everything went correctly, this should be the last um, the last lunchbox and we'll get the achievement. The star, I guess she's out of lunch. You certainly are the curious soul, aren't you? Kind of like the first person who sucked his cow's nipples to discover the milk. Still, I never thought he'd go digging up that kid two years ago. No one who travels a whole thing with mine, isn't it? Not only that, but the murder occurred on the very day the evidence from that case was due to the murder of Pearl. It can't all be attributed to me for instance. Aren't you forgetting something? You know, the little scene I happen to witness. I still haven't gotten the achievement, guys. I don't know what went wrong. We should have gotten the achievement. Maybe it'll come after we're done with this investigation. Let's hope for that, guys. The instant Lana stabbed Detective Goodman with a knife. No matter how much of the past you dig up, it won't change what I saw. Rose beef is meant to be savored when eaten. Miss Sara's hatred toward Lana. It all dates back to two years ago. There we go! The lunchbox specialist! Woo! We got the achievement! I feel very proud of that one. That's probably the most difficult achievement in um in this game. So we got that in our pockets, guys. Now it's only upwards. Joe Dark. That's a name I'll not soon forget. We trailed him for half a year. Oh, the pressure. Still, I don't think I was ever more alive than I was then. Those days were steamier than a whole ball of hot gravy. Poor old Jake Marshall, though. Must have been going through hell. You mean because of his brother's death? They were close, those two. After Neil died, something took over from Jake. He became obsessed. Seeing Jake like that made her all the more desperate. Her? Lana Sky. My sister? The best of the best were put on that SL9 case. Of course, they were led by that legendary duo. Lana and Chief Gant. That legendary pair was the reason we were able to keep up our investigation. That's why we were so shocked over how it turned out. You mean with the forging of the evidence? Don't get me wrong. 
Joe Dark got what he deserved. Still, it was obvious the evidence produced in court was being manipulated. Items our team never found would suddenly appear, while other items were kept secret. If you don't have proof, anything illegal was done. I'm proof enough. After that case, all of us saved good and were relieved of our duties. Most without even so much as an explanation. Then Nana Sky transferred to the prosecutor's office and became chief prosecutor. Nana always wanted to be a prosecutor. Nothing's quite as simple as it appears. Huh? Nana Sky was merely being used as a pawn. That's my take on the matter. She was being used? Even Gan, the Lana Sky. Gan led the investigation with Lan Gan, Gan led the investigation with Lana's second in command. They were the best. They solved all kinds of cases together, didn't they? Damon Gan's magnetism in particular was almost unreal. His magnetism? By that, I mean his ability to attract evidence. He produced the most incredible evidence in the case he handled in the cases he handled. Incredible evidence? I mean. Oh yes. There were rumors about him even back then. No one dared confront him though. I take it she's talking about forged evidence. Back then everyone looked up to Lana. All the detectives wanted to be like her. Really? Oh yes. Myself included. I was a fool, really. She hated anything crooky and always watched out for the other detectives. That's why she was so concerned for Jake. Mr. Marshall? When Jake's mother was murdered, she felt as if she had lost her own brother. If it wasn't for her, I don't think Jake would ever have recovered from his shock. That's what makes it all the more infuriating. Miss Star? That's why. I'll never be able to forgive her. Why did she have to turn so cold after that? Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office two years ago, didn't she? Yes, that's to Chief Gant's powerful influence. Chief? That's right. Having solved the other nine cases, his position as chief was secure. There was only one thing left for him to control. And then no one could stand in his way. The prosecutor's office. Ah, uh, so he put Lana there to have control over the prosecutor. Hmm. What? You mean that's why Lana was transferred? If he could control the chief prosecutor, he could control the prosecutor's office. That must have been his goal all along. But how could he control Anna? I don't know, but one thing's for sure. Ever since that case ended, she's never been the same. It's only logical to conclude. There must have been a reason for her change. I'm finally getting close to the bottom of this ugly mess. Thank you, Miss You listen to me, Rookie. It takes more than just ingredients to create fine cuisine. I hope you turn out to be a better chef than I can. I hope so too, I guess. Oh, you're back! You're still here. I gotta make 150 copies of these files. Brewing coffee, copying files. I'm turning to a regular DJ. You're a DJ as well? If I'm not mistaken, I think he means desk jockey. <laughs> that, that's confusing. I gotta admire your persistency, but my answer is no. I'm not letting you in the chief office, period. It'll be my neck on the line. That office is the last crime scene in the S9 incident. I have to take a look in there. There's gotta be something we can do to make the detective change his mind. What's this crumpled up piece of paper? You want me to throw it away for you? No, no way! M Mr. Ashworth can't be serious! Is he ever not serious? I can't believe they pushed him this far! Mr. Ashworth really feels responsible. When I first met him, I thought he was as cold as ice, too. But I know different now. He trusted us detectives to provide him with sound evidence. But we just... We betrayed him. That's it. I've made up my mind. But... Here, take my ID card. We can do that. If someone found out, they wouldn't let you off the hook in another Los Angeles report. Look at me. It's no secret. I'm already out of here. 
After all, I'm friends with Mr. Edgeworth. Depending on how this case turns out, I may already be as good as terminated. It makes sense what he's saying, but it breaks my heart. So at least let me do this. For Mr. Edgeworth's sake! Alright, detective. Thank you. Ah, uh, he looks happy now. <laughs> Gumshi's ID tucked swiftly into pocket. Let's not betray Gumshi's trust here. Uh, a police department ID card allows access to areas of PD open detectives. February 24, police department, chief's office. Here goes, Mr. Ray. And we're in. Let's do some digging around in here. Now. Detective Gumshoe's a caller. If that happens, I'm counting on you to bail me off. <laughs> ah! Dead. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were a ghost. I didn't even know you could slap a ghost. Ah, Detective Gumshoe! What are you doing sneaking up on us like that? Uh, I wasn't speaking, pal. I was just worried something might go wrong. So I came too. If you're here, then what's the point of you giving us your ID card? Because his ID crushed and rendered unusual a part of his whole pocket. Okay. Okay, hold on, Phoenix. You can't do that. Phoenix, calm down. <laughs> hey, don't do that to my card. <laughs> Phoenix lost the real one. I hardly ever get a chance to begin, so I figured I'd have a look around myself. Besides, we're all in this together now. You really do want to get tired, don't you? Not if you're lucky. Now come on, let's see what we can find out. Got a bad feeling about this. Look at that giant window. Makes you want to crash through it and jump on side. Uh, this is the 15th floor. I know, I was just saying. Saying what? Ever since making detectives, I've always dreamt about doing something like that. Like, I'm falling through your death. Look at some detective Gumption has a lot of dreams. As long as he doesn't go crashing through that window when he gets fired. Don't say that. Yeah, he, the bodies are definitely here and the chair is still safe. The shelves are mostly empty. Lana must have cleaned them out when she transferred over to the prosecutor's office. There's a small picture frame on the left shelf. Hey, this is when Lana and I went to the theme park. So sad. This was Lana's desk. Uh, it sure is tidy. Lana's always been a meticulous cleaner. There's not even any dust on it. Looks like someone's still keeping it clean. Does Lana ever come back here? No. Chief Gan will still keep it clean in order in memory of her apartment. Kinda of weird, dude. They were the stuff like this are made of. Does he keep it in memory of her or in memory of the crime? This was taken on that day three years ago. Then Joe Dark ran out of the questioning room and tried to kill Emma and kill Neil Marshall. So he won the award and was killed on the same day. It's kind of rough, man. Talk about a roller coaster of emotions. <laughs> After receiving his award trophy, Mr. Marshall took a picture here. He didn't take it, though. Then went along with Chief Gant to question Dark. I bet he never knew he'd be dead just a few hours later. He think? Chief's organ sure is the sight of the whole. Occasionally we hear him playing it from the criminal first part. That's on the second floor, and this is the 15th floor of an entirely different building. It just rings in your ears, pal. When the detective screws up, Chief calls him to his office and makes them listen to the organ try. <laughs> oh, no. what's the matter about that? The music soul suits the soul. After that, the detective can't hear anything for days except for the ringing in their ears and the bleeding of their heart. This instrument of the But aren't the chief's ears affected? He never listens to anyone in here. <laughs> Side point. Oh, to look at the floor. This mark looks like some kind of flower. Where it is, it's designed as the insignia on the prosecutor's badge. Oh, I see. Prosecutor's badge? Yeah, like the one hanging from your collar. What? They have badges too? It's only supposed to portray the severity of the punishment system. Now that you mention it, it does look all pointy and kind of easy. Mr. Edward never really but Mr. Edward never wears a badge. That's because he's a sharp dresser. A badge like that wouldn't go too well with his outfit. Those sharp dressers don't need to wear badges. 
I guess everyone just kind of left the fight. I don't see how that's supposed to sacrifice severe punishment. This is the real deal, isn't it? His armor and his weapons? Sure is, Bob. The chief doesn't care for imitations. There's a pipe organ, not his armor. Do you know how many taxpayers all of us have gone into the room? What? You mean we're paying? What's this? I'm not paying one cent of my taxes. You don't have any taxes to pay. Shh, be careful of what you say. Who knows? The chief may be hiding in his armor as we speak. I don't think it's good. He's quite a big guy. Even if he did, he'd never be able to get back up. Cut it out. You guys don't know how scary this guy can be. He does seem pretty far from this entire time. If you had to drop that suit of armor from here, the first chief wanted to use stained glass for this window. Really? They say, they say he changed his mind because he wouldn't be able to see the view. Oh. Same glass and all, it's a huge window. Wow, look at the size of Chief Kansas' desk. Speaking of that, when we were here earlier. Oh, it's you too. Yeah, okay. He put the paper in the desk. I wonder what he was reading. This looks like a list of evidence. Oh, it's probably the missing list that Ezra was talking about. What is that? In most cases, the list was twice as long as this one. Hey, look at the case name! Huh? As a nine incident. I wonder what this is doing here. Doesn't it say, like, page two or something? Because that would really clarify things. Hold on, detective. What did you just say? I said, I wonder what... No, no, about evidence list. Normally, they're twice as long. That's right. I guess there wasn't a lot of evidence. There is, though. Half size list of evidence. A list of evidence. It seems too short. Most lists run twice as long. What would the other half of the list be doing here? I knew it! The chief must be hiding something about that case. It would appear so. Evidence list added to the court record. List of evidence in the S9 incident was ripped in half, so this part is all I've got. Okay. Wow. Okay. We found this inside the drawer, a list of evidence from the S9 incident. Mr. Edward had the other half of that list. What would this list be doing here? We gotta look a little more into this list. Yep. That's probably the last thing in there. This is a safe, isn't it? Safe. That word is ripe with intrigue. Uh, okay, if you say so. It looks like a code needs to be entered into this panel to open it. It's a seven digit thing. Seven digit number. I think I just might know what it is. Input number. Do you know what it is? I have a hunch. Oh, I know. Do you want to try my birth date? It's. No. No, go, you. I have another idea. I have a better idea. Here goes nothing. Uh. This should be it. Code confirmed access granted. Boy! Bingo. What number did you enter? Whose birthday was that, pal? 777777. The final ID card number on that record. What? The number of this mysterious executive officer who entered the room that day. You mean. 777777? That ID number? I think you're only one seven shy this time. This could only mean one thing. That Chief Gans that is Chen Chief Gans ID number. Not really conclusive though. I mean it sure looks like it, but say anyone care to look inside? Yes. Is there any money in there? How much does he have stashed away? Look, it's a uh a shard from a broken cup. This somehow looks familiar. Where have I seen this before? It's the missing piece from the vase. There's something else in there here too. Like this, it looks like a piece of leather cloth. With a handprint on it. <laughs> this is the handprint, isn't it? Hey, I saw someone wearing a shirt like that one. Do you think the chief made up the design? Uh, I, I don't think so. Oh, well, it was just a thought. Is that it? Is this all that was in the safe? Apparently so. It's empty now. Must mean those two pieces are very important. A piece of cloth with a handprint on it. And a broken shard from a cup. 
They look like pieces of evidence. Yeah, but unless you can prove they have something to do with this case, I'm afraid I can't just let you take them. After all, it's my neck of mine here. Great, now I have to prove their relevancy. How are these two items related to the SL9 incident? Come on, there's gotta be something to be shut in the Yeah, well, the first one is off. Because, uh, no. Oh, okay. The desk on the other side of the room. Was that your sister's? Yes, that's where I was waiting for Lana. On that day two years ago. Is anyone using it now? No, sir. This is entirely Chief Gant's soul now. He practices a strict policy of preserving the crime scene. Okay, that's a strange reason to be there. He leaves it as a warning to everyone else. He wants us to always be alert. He told us so himself at our New Year's party. Of course, he was pretty intoxicated at the time. And this is not a lab, no one ever touches it. No one except Chief Gav, who touches it every day. And the painted lady who is in here. Still, two years have passed since I've been It can't possibly be anything for me. Can I ask you something? Sure. You only came here to look around, right? Because it's one of the SL9 crises. I mean, that's your only reason for coming here, isn't it? Why do you ask? You don't think. Nah, you wouldn't be. No, there's no way. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Okay, now then let's look around a bit more. Hey, hold on. That's a fast buddy. Huh? What is it? When someone tells you don't worry about it, it's supposed to start bothering you, pal. You don't you don't just let it go at like that. Sorry. Guys to the miners. Okay, so what's bothering you? You two don't think Chief Gan might be a suspect, do you? What? He's right, Mr. Wright. What do we think of him? Chief Gan. So it's finally come to this. What do I think of him? Perhaps it's best I don't divulge my feelings. Yeah. There you go, ignore me again. Take a gun. Could you have another look at this jar? I remember when the three of us put that back together. Ah, oh, those were days. Well, Wasn't this jar a piece of evidence from that case? That's right! One of the charts has an SL9 incident sticker on it. Doesn't this ring any bells? You know, the fragment we just found? You mean this one? That was in the safe! Yes, that one. That was in the safe! Now that you mention it, it's ring a little bell! <laughs> Let's see if it fits! Okay. Here, let me see that shard. I'll take a crack at this. Go ahead, pal. Show us what a roof can do. Mr. Wright, here's some glue. If I can piece this together again, it'll prove she again with knowingly hiding evidence. Here goes. Uh, rotate. Yeah, that seems right. Uh, come on. Yeah. There you go. There, it fits like a charm. That, of course, means Chief Gant willingly and knowingly hid a piece of this jar in his safe. Don't glue it on there, though, <laughs> because that's, you know, then we can't get it out anymore. <laughs> in other words, he concealed a piece of evidence from the SM9 incident. But... Hey, guys, get a load of this! What is it? This piece you just attached. It's different from the others. There's more stuff on it. There's a reddish line on it. A reddish line? That's not. I don't get it! Why would Chief Gand hide this in a safe? Unstable jar updated. Evidence from the SL9 incident. Final fragments found in Chief Gand's safe. Blood traces. Ooh, there we go. I wonder what this is. It looks like someone drew some kind of sketch here. Did you find something? I can't make it out. I'd better keep quiet about it for now. Huh? Oh no, it's nothing. Why are your eyes moving about like that, Miss Wright? I'd better not forget about this picture. That's what the chief was reading for, isn't it? You know when we first came in here? Yeah, it looks like the right side of the form has torn off. This reference list really was only half of the whole thing. Something else is bugging me more than that. Take a look at the back of the wall. Back? 
Oh, I already did that. Take a gun shoot. I'd like you to have a look at this. Hey, I know what that is. So, you wanna take some fingerprints? It's a great idea, detective. Alright, go to town. Sheesh. What are you doing? Why are you sticking out your hand like that? Go ahead, take my fingerprints. Um, it's not your fingerprints you want to take? Huh? Come on, this this isn't a time for come on, this isn't a time for jokes. We're talking about that coffee we found in the safe. Oh <laughs> I knew that. The one with the handprint on it, right? Sheesh, where's your sense of humor? <laughs> okay. Okay, Mr. Right, let's check out the prints. Sprinkle the powder on the cloth. Then once they've been absorbed into the prints, blow the rest away. What are you, my mom? I don't have to talk many times. Alright, let's get this over with. I guess the middle finger is the best one. Yep, there we go. Alright. That's the one. That's Emma, you guys. Emma! It's Emma's fingerprints! No, how can this be? What are Emma's fingerprints doing here? Hey, you found a match? Whose fingerprints are they? Huh? Oh, uh, it seems the prints are too old! They aren't clear enough to get a match. Oh, that's too bad. I thought it'd be Dark's prints. Psst, hey, you! Over here! What's going on here? What are the kids' fingerprints doing inside the chief's safe? Don't ask me! Let's just keep this information from Emma for now. Here. Maybe you should hold on to this. Piece of cloth folded and added to the court record. Found the key of can save evidence for something, but what? Bears Emma's guy's fingerprints. Be careful not to wipe any of those, please. Well, was I any help? Of course! Thanks to your ID card, we were able to get some hard evidence. Now that's not very kind, is it? In other words, if it wasn't for his ID card, he would have been useless. Isn't that right, you and the coat? Chief Gantz! You didn't think you'd be back so soon. Fortunately, I'm a man who believes in signs. As I was walking to my meeting, I happened to look out a window and saw a stray dog run right into a hole. Just then I thought of a certain detective. You mean... Me, sir? No, no. I'm afraid I have to ask you all to leave. Yes, sir. Sorry. Oh, you want to go? Me, sir? Drop off your ID on the way out. You won't be needing it anymore. But, sir. Now get out. Yes, sir. We'll be on our way too then. Wait, you, the one without the spike here. Don't go yet. Sir, I'd like to work with you. Sir, I'm not a licensed scientific investigator yet. You, with spiky hair, you're free to go. I don't trust this. She's underage, Kat. Please. Right. Look, pal, if I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. The chief's office is off limits. But no, you just had to go sneaking in there like that, didn't you? I thought you said you didn't care anymore if you were fired. Yeah, but if I knew it'd be like this, I never would have said it. Now that I've seen the evidence Chief Kant was hiding in his office, I think it's finally starting to get the picture. But why has she kept eerily silent about it? Anyway, you listening to me? I'm gonna try to smooth things over to Chief Gap. Later, pal! That's not gonna work. After that, I heard from Emma. She said the police wanted to ask her some questions. So she'll be busy for the rest of the day. What could they possibly ask her about? Because she was not a witness in the Bruce Goodman case, and the other case is already closed, so why would the police keep her? February 24th, Dungeon Fist. I see. So the chief asked Emma to come in for questions. It's no use in you, Molly. Tomorrow's the final day in court. I'm committed to doing everything I can to defend you, which is why I'm here. But if I already told you all I can. 
what you've told me over these past couple of days is absolutely nothing. Not a single useful thing. Really? I believe I did mention something quite important. Something I told you right at the beginning. I said that I was the one who stabbed Detective Goodman. You know, I think I finally figured it out. I know who it is, I've learned you. I a good job answering you. I'm rather jealous. It seems Etcher was right. Etcher? Once you're convinced you know something, no one can persuade you otherwise. Thick headed is the term he is, I believe. Now's my chance to get her to tell me the rest of the story. I have to admit I was more than a little protective of this. You insisted you did it, yet there was no incriminating evidence. That's when it hit me. It's not that you're unwilling to do it. It's that you are incapable of telling the truth because of a certain individual. What an intriguing notion. A certain individual, you say? So you think I'm protecting this person? Protecting? No, I think afraid of is more like it. If I'm not mistaken, the person in question may have persuaded you to silence. For argument's sake, Mr. Wright, who, may I ask, is this person you're speaking of? The one I am supposedly so frightened of? Who what is this person's name? Take that! Well, this guy? Mr. Wright, you are addressing the chief prosecutor. Do not forget your place. I take it she's still not ready to spill the beans. My apologies. Could you please tell me a bit more about what you think you know? We were partners until two years ago. I respected him as a detective. Assuming he is respectable, then tell me something. Why would he try to hide his crimes? His crimes? Both you and Edgar will be brought before a board of inquiry for what you did. Specifically hiding and forging evidence. Of course. Serious offenses. Why is it though that Chief Gan's name was never mentioned? Ashford yeah. didn't know the truth behind the The only party who could have possibly tampered with the evidence was me. I had access because I was second in command of that investigation. Yes, you, but also one another. One other. Damon Gan. If you intend to accuse Chief Gan, again, you'll need more than just words. Show me proof that she can falsify the evidence in that case. Uh, you... Take that! Huh? I just found this in the saving thief's office. This jar piece. And this piece of cloth. Do you know what these are? They're pieces of evidence from the Azul 9 incident. I... The person concealing evidence was none other than Chief Gan himself. Now tell me, why are you taking all the blame for him? Touché, Mr. Wright. It says you surmise. I cannot disobey the Chief's orders. Even if it means being found guilty for murder. Why not? Come on, Mr. Wright. You can't possibly expect me to be able to, be able to tell you that. Three days ago, I had no choice but to cooperate. In the murder of Detective Good? Or perhaps I should say, follow orders. Yes, that's more accurate than cooperating. Although I can tell you the details, I can say that I was given an order that day. I need you to dispose of Bruce Goodman's body. You'll find it inside the trunk of Miles Ashraf's car. Just as I suspected. Despite what everyone believes, you were not the one who murdered the Detective Goodman. Correct. I was trying to take the body out of Atra's car. The trunk's lock was broken, and I discovered that murder weapon while inspecting the body. The murder weapon? You mean Atra's knife? No. When I found the body, this was the knife stuck in it. A knife from the Ezel 9 incident? Serial killer John Dark's knife. I couldn't just leave that knife in him. So I took it out and stabbed him with another knife. That would be Ashra's knife. That's right. Even though he was already dead, my hands were shaking at the thought of stabbing him. That's why I ended up cutting my hand. And that is the reason for the bandage on your right hand. Yes. It seems that I got blood on the victim's shoes as well. And then... She saw me, just as I plunged the knife in. Miss Star, huh? 
Why did you need to hide Dark's knife so well? It took a lot of work to finally close the Dark case two years ago. It was over with. I didn't ever want to be it open again. My intent was to prevent that by whatever means possible. So you hit Dark's knife. The weapon used to stab the detective was evidence in the Joe Dark case. If word got out, which it would, the reporters would have a field day with that. So you wrapped the knife in your scarf and hid it. An adverse exhaust pipe. Great. Then I called my sister to tell her what happened and to ask her to hide the knife that was inside my mother. You asked Emma? I didn't want anyone on the force to know about this. That would explain why Emma is so confident about Lana's innocence. Speaking of phone calls, I had a bad feeling about one of them that day. A bad feeling? The truth is, after I received those orders from Chief Don, Kent, the first thing I did was make a phone call. A phone call to Patrolman Jake Marshall. Marshall? Why on earth would you call him? The lead investigator for the S9 incident had been murdered. I wanted that fact to be kept hidden and I needed help. He was the only other person I could trust. Or at least I thought I could trust him at the time. However, it seems that after I spoke to him, he went off on the next on his own. Oh, you mean. Not wanting the case to die, he decided to take things into his own hands. He disguised himself as Detective Goodman and tried to steal the evidence. He had already stolen the ID card. But it seems he still hadn't made up his mind to break it to the evidence room. After my phone call, any remaining doubts he had must have disappeared. So your phone call caused the incident in the evidence room? I'm afraid that's all I can tell you. But Lana, you've earned my respect, Mr. Wright, both as a defense attorney and an investigator. Now please, don't pursue this any further in court tomorrow. Tomorrow's trial. There's only one way to drive off Lana's demons. I've got to get to the bottom of everything. Detective Goodman's real murder. And what went down in the chief's office two years ago? To be continued. Oh, that was the last investigation of Rise from the Ashes. We hit the um, we hit the achievement, and man, this uh, video is pretty long, um, but very, very intriguing, very interesting. Um, I will try not to keep too much time between the last uploads of this case, um, but you know, I'm still kind of sick. And, um, but I will do my best to bring the goods to you soon. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one. Doi doi.